Hi everyone, my name is Manon Flaja and I'm going to present the work I did with Antoine Cully on fast and stable map elites in noisy domain using deep grids. This work is based on quality diversity algorithms, so I'm going to introduce them quickly. So one core idea between these quality diversity algorithms is the importance of diversity. So most of optimization algorithms focused on finding a unique solution to a problem, but developing di different and diverse uh, ways to solve a problem is a powerful tool, as the coexistence of multiple solutions allow to face and recover from unexpected events and damage, but also to find stepping stones toward alternative complex solutions that cannot easily be found with a direct optimization process. If you take the example of natural evolution, it didn't find a unique fixed solution to solve the global problem of surviving on Earth, but a lot of them, as diverse as possibly feasible, and this allow life to survive multiple extensions and drastic environmental changes, but also to develop more and more complex organisms. So quality diversity algorithms make use of this idea by learning in a single optimization process a collection of diverse and high-performing solutions. So the quality of a solution is quantified by, by the fitness and to quantify the diversity of a solution, a quality diversity algorithm make use of a behavior descriptor space, which is describing the, uh, the effect of a solution. And so the idea of quality diversity algorithm is to optimize both the quality of the solution and the coverage of the discursor space. And so the final solution will be the, the overall collection. So the most known of this algorithm is MapElite, which is based on the idea of discretizing uh, the behavior descriptor space, which you have an example here in two dimension, and to keep in each of the cell the best possible individual called an elite. <clears throat> so generation after generation, the cell of the, of the algorithm will be filled with more and more qualitative solutions to slowly converge to the final population that will be returned as the output of the algorithm. So the overall algorithm, a map elite algorithm can be summarized this way. So at each generation, an elite is selected from the grid, mutated and evaluated to give a new individual that would be added back to the grid. And this new uh, individual is added back based on two criterion, which is uh, if it fill an empty cell, so meaning improving the overall diversity of the final population, or if it's better than the existing elite in its, uh, in its cell, meaning if it's improving the quality of the overall population. So this map elite algorithm has been applied to many different domains, so including developing solutions for damage recovery, but also evolving collection of robotic gates, for example, and collection of contents for video games. One main drawback of quality diversity algorithm is their behavior in the face of uncertainty. If you take the simple example of trying to learn or to control this robot, and you want to find all the possible solution uh, to, that will lead the robot to uh, all the, the points in the plane X, Y, with the lowest possible energy consumption for each position, so your fitness is this energy consumption, and the descriptor is the final position of the robot in the, in the X, Y plane. If you have, for some reason, uh, an error on the estimation of the fitness, so if your fitness is uncertain, meaning your sensors, for example, are noisy and you cannot get the exact energy consumption, you can have one individual that would be estimated with a value that is higher than its true value and will then replace an individual already in the grid uh, that has a lowest value. And if this estimated value is higher than every possible value you can get for this uh, behavior descriptor position, uh, you will get an individual uh, in, that is lucky instead of a truly good performing one, and this will result in a loss in performance of the overall population. Similarly, if you have an uncertainty on the behavior descriptor, so you're not absolutely sure of the final position of your robots in this case, you could get an individual that has an estimated descriptor uh, in a neighboring cell in which the higher fitness you can get is not as high as the one of this individual. So this individual will, will fi finally block the cell by uh, preventing truly uh, good performing and diverse individual from filling in the cell. And this will result in the loss in diversity. So this example uh, gives you uh, give an idea of why quality diversity algorithm uh, cannot face, so have trouble to face uncertainty. 
So uh, there are existing solutions. So the most straightforward one is to use sampling. So the idea is that uh, each time you mutate an elite to get a new individual, you will compute a statistic on this new individual by averaging, for example, uh, an evaluation of it before adding it back to the grid. So you will have a better estimate of its true fitness and descriptor value. The main limitation of this approach is that it's really data inefficient. So um, in robotics, it can be really in, in practical. An alternative is therefore to try to be more simple wise in the way uh, in the re-evaluation of the individual. So to give a sample to the most promising individual, this is this has been done, for example, in the work in 2019 called adaptive sampling. In this work, uh, we propose a totally different approach we call deep grid map list that is not based at all on sampling of the solution but instead is based on the idea of reusing previously encountered solution. So the core idea of deep grid is to replace each elite of map elite grids with a subpopulation of similar individuals. So you will have a, a simply add a depth to your grid and kept uh, multiple solution per cell. The algorithm of deep grid is really similar to uh, the map elite algorithm. So you, the only difference is that you will need to select first a cell and then an individual in this cell before mutating and adding it back to the grid. The main design question of deep grid is how do you build the selection and the add process to favorize, so to uh, tackle uncertainty. So the core challenge is to fight the main problem of Mapolis is that it's not always questioning the solution in the grid, but you want to question the solution while keeping uh, Mapolis convergence. So what we did, uh, what we proposed in deep grid is first to define an add rule that will allow to always question solution. And to do so, we define an add rule that is always adding the new individual, replacing a randomly existing one, meaning that all individuals have the same probability to be replaced by a new individual. And to keep uh, the, the elitism of Mapolit, we define a selection rule that is based on the idea that the cell is randomly selected as in traditional Mapolit, but the individual inside the cell is selected fitness proportionally. So the main idea of deep grid is that generation after generation, the population inside the cell will converge to replication of a similar solution. And this is due to the fact that each time you're selecting uh, an individual from the grid itself and mutating it and reproducing it. So finally, uh, you will have at some point a convergence toward replication of the same individuals. We compare this approach on different tasks. The first of them is an arm, uh, ADOF arm task in which you control the ADOF arm and try to reach all possible XY position with the end of the arm while minimizing the variance in the value of the joints. So you have an example of the, on the right of the, the type of archive you can get with this arm. And so these are the results we got uh, in this case. So um, to compare the different algorithm, what we did is uh, we ran the algorithm and at the end we re-evaluated all the individuals or so all the cells 50 times and evaluate this way um, an approximation of the ground truth of the fitness and the descriptor of each individuals and we then replace them where they truly belong. So if you have empty cells in the, in the final archive, it means that this cell uh, was not filled uh, at the end by the algorithm after re-evaluations. So you have on the left the two baselines, so the one without noise is fill, fully filled because there is no noise, and the, the other baseline is the, the behavior of map leads in face of this uncertainty. And uh, so the noise we add is a simple Gaussian noise on the fitness and the descriptor. And on the right, you have the performance of all the different approaches. So the sample based one, the sample wise approach and the deep grid approach we propose in this paper. So we see that deep grid is really good at, uh, at uh, finding the true value of the behavior descriptor of the individuals. So for comparison reason, we added the best individual of each cell of deep grid. Uh, to, in order to compare it and to show that the fitness performance are not as bad as it seems when you look at the normal deep grid grid. So we did exactly the same thing with the next task. 
a simulated hexapod control task in which this time the descriptor is the final position of the hexapod and you're trying to learn how to walk uh, in every direction. So the final fitness is the orientation of the robots. And we got the following archive. So similarly, you have on the left or the two baseline on the right all the approaches. So again, DeepGrid is better at finding stable solution. So at handling the uncertainty on the behavior descriptor. And so the, here are the, compar the quantitative comparison of all these approaches. So on each graph, the baseline without any noise is in, in red and DeepGrid is in pink. So you have the comparison on three tasks. So the restringing task is a traditional uh, optimization task. And so we compared all of this algorithm according to three metrics. The first one is the number of correct descriptors. So how many descriptors are well uh, evaluated by the algorithm. The second one is the corrected collection size. So it's quantifying the true diversity of the final archive. And it's inspired by the traditional uh, diversity metrics of QD algorithm. And the last uh, metric is the total corrected quality, uh, which, is, uh, co the, which is the equivalent of the QD score for quality diversity algorithm and corresponds to the sum of the fitness uh, of all uh, cell of the grid, so of the archive. So on this, uh, all these metrics and among across all the tasks, uh, DeepGrid is performing better than the, all the other algorithm. And this is mainly due to the fact that it's really good at uh, approximating the true value of the behavior descriptor. We propose DeepGrid, which is an extension of MapElite algorithm to handle uncertainty. This algorithm is efficient to reduce uncertainty on the solution behavior descriptor. And we tested it on one noisy optimization task and two noisy robotic tasks. So the main advantage of DeepGrid is to be um, more data efficient than all the sampling based approaches while allowing to have a better estimation of the behavior descriptor noise. Thank you.